Welcome everybody to the Christian Marauder. The big question is why? Is why? Why are things going crazy? Why are things going the way they are and stuff? And what we can do about it? Why are things going on today like they are going on? That's what we're seeing today. We're seeing all kinds of craziness go on, you know, and a lot of things we don't even know what's going on. For example, there are big protests in Europe, you know, about, and I think it was in France, about pitch, uh, pension funds and illegal immigration that is going on over in Europe. And as well as in Europe, as well as protesting the... Uh, WEF's influence in their, in, their, in their governments and forcing them to accept climate junk that they should not be um, made to do. Like, you know, we're going to starve the population by not allowing certain types of fertilizers anymore because we got to do this. And in fact, in our own country, the United States, uh, there, our Congress is getting ready to pass a bill or getting it ready to run through the House and the Senate about... Uh, energy compliant uh, washing machines, let's see, refrigerators and dishwashers to make them carbon neutral. That would devastate the industry and there's no way you can ever do that because it doesn't make any sense. And plus you got to add the fertilizer crisis going on and not because uh, of, the, of the, what's going on in the Ukraine, uh, it's just because this is what they want. And so so you got to ask yourself, why? Why are all this stuff going on? Why don't we hear about any of this? And I heard another article, or read an article, how the people in the United Kingdom are simply not protesting like they are in other parts of the country. I guess they haven't reached the tipping point yet where people had enough, because your very life is being threatened by whacked out people, whacked out ideas, whacked out things. And by and large... Um, I was, I was talking to a person the other day, and it was, you know, why why isn't the church um, getting it? You know, there are, I, I thank the Lord for what churches are there out, out there that are getting what's going on and telling their people what's going on. But by and large, why are the majority of Christian churches not getting it? Why are they just continuing to go on as they go on and do the same old things? And... You know, basically the answer was, you know, you can't address this, this might offend people. So we got to just deal with what, what works. You basically, you know, teach about prosperity, teach about health, teach about wealth, you know, and, and, and all that stuff are the same old things. Or you also, another thing the person brought out said, um, you also need to address you know, people's broken hearts and wombs and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. That part I don't have a problem with in churches addressing that stuff. But when you don't tell your people that there are massive protests going on, who the World Economic Forum is, who and what in the world is going on, why are you seeing this? Why do you look up in the sky in the morning and see all these contrails? Again, we saw tons of contrails, and again, I'm sneezing like crazy. Why are you seeing all this stuff? Why are you seeing this stuff? Why are you seeing high prices? Every week I go to the store, <laughs> the grocery store, and I'm amazed at the price increases. You know, 65 cents I think it was here in Colorado for a, 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 for bananas <laughs> a pound of bananas it's like what and you know they used to be cheap you go in the fresh vegetable department and you're looking at it and they go how come it looks so bad it doesn't matter what store you go to here at least in Colorado you can put your comments down there and tell me what it's like in your neck of the woods but why 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 is this going on why do I go to uh, Walgreens and um, I had to go buy what is known as a uh, I get it up here a brace for my hand because I have uh, injured my hand many years ago and, and tweaked it so I have to wear braces I took it off today so just to let, let it rest a little bit from the brace and um, so why why is it so hard to find supplies you go to Walgreens and most of the shelves are bare and I'm just going, what is going on? Have you ever asked why? 
and what are we can do about it? I think the people in Europe that are doing the protesting, I think 750,000 in some capital somewhere in Europe was going at it. Why don't we do that here? I mean, these people are after blood. You have these people like uh, uh, Noah Harari talking about human beings are hackable. They want to place his, they're, they're speaking about placing his book that he wrote for kids uh, to be mainstream pushed in public education throughout the world, okay? In some places it probably is. Where he basically tells you you're, you're, you're no, no animals and that it's okay to lie in order to achieve the greatest end for the greatest possible good. We're doing this for your best so we have to lie to you. Now why are we seeing all these crazy idiotic things going on in the world? And that's what we're going to look at today. I can't really answer any of those questions other than through the book of Revelation. Because things are heating up. Bill Gates has put out that the chat GSP thing, they call it chat GSP, uh, or the G, uh, GSP AI, or GSP AI, like I talked about last week, is going to go mainstream. So for the public, it's chat GSP. That's where you can say, I want to write a, a paper, fully scholarly work, and this thing will print it out and pub push it out on you. You have a perfectly written paper within three seconds, three to five seconds. They want to put the AI, the GS, uh, GSP AI, into how to the architectural design in the fields of sciences and in the fast food industry so that when you drive up, it'll read, uh, you know, off your phone, your personality traits, and have your order ready for you without you ordering. Now, those are the type of things and that this thing is designed to do. And the, um, I think what Bill Gates was saying, how great this will, will be because it will help the job market. <laughs> it's going to put people out of work. And what's Noah Harari's solution for it? Well, play video games, you dumb you down, and get you drugged up. And, uh, you know, for your own good. That, that type of stuff, you know, you make you shake your head. You know, are we really approaching this amount of insanity? And the answer happens to be yes. And we have to ask why. Because the answer simply is why we're seeing all this is because we're heading into the last days. I know a lot of people get tired of hearing Bible prophecy, but we're going to approach this a lot differently because I've been talking about how Bible numbers work. And so I also want to share on Bible prophecy. I want to go through the, the seven seals, the, the seven trumpets, and the seven bowls of wrath. I want to show you from here using the Bible numbers in sequence. And you're going to see how you interpret Bible numbers according to the context. And it will not add anything to the scripture that's not already there. It will actually point to other scriptures in the Bible in a, in a unique way. Um, and I'm going to kind of show you how that works, and then in the process you might uncover why we're seeing why what we're seeing, okay? And so, do you need to do Bible numbers and go through, you know, the first uh, trump, the first seal is related to the number one, uh, one in the Hebrew alphabet, Aleph, and its meaning. You know, what, you know, you really don't have to do this, you just need a good commentary. I'm doing this because it'll teach you when you see sequential numbers to apply the meaning to it, and then you'll see a connection which will connect to other parts of the Bible. You also will see how you interpret it correctly. Um, how, how should I say it? Hmm, can't think of the word. Accurately how to accurately translate this, how to actually look at, how to actually use Bible numbers correctly and not the dumb way that most people have learned to use them, you know. But this, this stuff is real. So we're going to look at the, the seven seals first. So here's the first set is the seven seals. The next are the, the, the seven trumpets and then the seven woes or the seven vials of wrath. And so we're going to look at these things right now. So we're going to look at these seven seals. And I'm not going to read all the verses to you. I'm just going to show you. The seven seals is about a man seen on a white horse with a bow who's going out to conquer. So you correlate, how this correlates to it is number one is number one means a strong leader, any type of strong leader. It also means being yoked to or united to a strong leader. The third shade of meaning denotes power, authority, and strength. 
and number four refers a head of a household like a father so you have in the in the book of revelation someone riding a white horse with a bow going out to conquer okay this is a strong leader see how it connects just it's that simple isn't it not too too much to add to it or subtract to it this is about a strong leader this is the most Bible uh, commentaries that I read, this represents the Antichrist. Some people say this is represents Jesus. I think it represents the, the Antichrist because the context of Revel Revelation concerns the Antichrist. And you'll see how the first seal, the first trumpet, and the first bowl of wrath all connect to each other. They do. You'll see in that in just a second. And it'll explain some things what we're seeing. So the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one, and the wicked one has what is known as an antichrist system. John writes about it in 1 John, says the spirit of antichrist already at work in the world. It is, it is. It's been at some time. What is that? It is a plan that seeking to conquer and control the entire world, place it under a yoke of control. Okay? And so, basically, the Antichrist system is going to replace God's order and design by destroying it and building it back better. No other way to say it. They want to utterly destroy it because they view God's kingdom as authoritarian. What right do you have to tell us how to live our lives? Stuff like that. Without ever seeing that they're being lied to because the Lord offers grace. He allows you free moral will. You can make your own decision. He poses a question to you. What are you going to do about Jesus? And you can reject it or accept it freely. No one's forcing you to do anything. It never has been that way. Okay? Get over it. Now, I will admit that religious people have made rules and things, and you might have a beef about that, but, you know, this Antichrist system is more authoritarian and control. And that is why we are seeing a push for censoring of free speech and why we're seeing hearings going on in our government in the United States here in the House of Representatives. They're actually shocking. I doubt if anything will come of it because it's just, to me, it's just a bunch of words. And what they're doing is actually exposing the collusion between big government and big tech on censorship. It's still going on. You can't say things anymore without being axed from the from the thing. I know some people that I watch these history shows a lot, and a lot of them are getting flack. And some of them are getting kicked off of Facebook. Some of them are getting kicked off of, of, of YouTube because they're talking just pure history. This is the history of this, that. Well, that is offensive. Some people will be offended by it. What? I'd rather live under God's grace and the authoritarian control of an antichrist spirit. So this, this spirit that goes forth writing and conquer is going to, it's all about uniting everyone to an antichrist system. Okay, we're seeing that right now. And so when the real antichrist arises, people will come and embrace him. As the, as the hero. He's going to solve all the problems because in order to destroy the system, that you, you have to create chaos. And so you're going to see in the, um, the, seven, the seven seals, you know, you'll see this progression of chaos being made in order to bring everybody into a unity with this system and the leader. So you're going to have, see in the beginning people setting the grounds swell and ground stage for the antichrist to come on the scene and you're going to see it you're going to see censorship you're going to see about misinformation you're going to have your rights and liberties stripped away from you they want to force you to comply and because this is a hellish demonic thing if you think i'm kidding the grammys came out I never watched the Grammys. I, I mean, I, I don't watch them. I haven't watched them in years because they've just gotten sick. And this was probably the sickest one ever that was ever, ever, ever seen. And this, this one was amazing because it was a satanic ritual being performed on, on, on TV. I couldn't even hardly, I couldn't watch it. I, I, I just, you know, I saw some excerpts, even on the news, Tucker Carlson brought it out and other people showed it. I just couldn't watch it. I had to turn, close my eyes because this is purely demonic. And guess who sponsored it? Pfizer. 
Do you think there's a possibly a connection between the uh, upper echelon of society and the major corporations? Do you, do you think there's a connection with some type of spirit that wants to build back better with ESG scores if you don't comply? Who's very totalitarian, authoritarian, because they know best. You who, who write children's books about you being a dirty, rotten animal, and you're no good, and you can be anything you want, you know, da 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 da. And uh, do, do, do you want this stuff? Do, you know, why are you seeing it? Well, because this is being unleashed. Do I know if the seal is opened? I don't think it has been opened yet. I, I have no idea. I can't say for sure. You know, I don't think it has, in my personal opinion. So don't take me wrong. But this is about the Antichrist coming on the scene to conquer. It's going to be finalized, and the stages of it are going to be finalized because um, the strong one. Let me go back here. The white horse, Aleph. The strong one. The red horse is Bet. The black horse is Gimel. The pale horse relates to Dalit. The martyrs under the altar are related to the meaning of the word Hey. Earthquake, sun and moon and stars fall are related to Va. Silence in heaven is related to Zeon. So the, each one of these numbers of the Hebrew alphabet have meaning and these are related to it okay and they add a little depth of meaning so we're going to look at the red horse and how it's related to the number bet how it correlates to it let me show you what it means the red horse is the, is the horse that goes out and does war okay so the second letter of the Hebrew alphabet is bet which is pictograph of a house and it means a root meaning is a house, a household, and what divides or causes division, meaning uh, um, is to see whose house one belongs to. It also means divide or division by a witness. Uh, it's some type of division. That's all it is. There's a lot of definitions there, but it's just basically also division. And so in the book of Revelation, on the red horse comes and you see the red horse making war. What divides people why do you even have a war war just talks about a division a war a war a war i'm going to turn to the book of revelation because i didn't write all the scriptures down because it would take too long and didn't have all that here in revelation chapter 6 verse 4 it says another horse fiery red went out and it was granted on the one saddle on it to take peace from the earth and that people should kill one another and there should be given to him a great sword now we go back to the letter bet I just want you to see it. It means division. What divides people than more than killing each other in war? So the Antichrist system needs chaos. It needs war. It needs something to go on. And so in the last days, Jesus said, you'll see wars and rumors of wars. We have rumors and, and rumors of war going on for perpetuity, but in the last time, they're more sinister. They're more united for a purpose to bring chaos fertilizer shortages, wheat shortages, for example, deliberately aimed at that. And these people don't even care if they, they have a nuclear war anymore. So, and they all laud China as the one that should rule the world, you know, and that, that, that system. Chinese communism is actually a blend of fascism and communism mixed. It's a little different than just pure communism, where you have corporations and businesses allowed to operate under the guise of the state okay it, it's it's the, they're helping each other it's still communism but it's a little different it's it, it's the CCP largely gives a controls the WEF BlackRock is associated with the Chinese military I can't say any more than that. Just to think about it. And so they're the ones who want to push ESG scores. I wonder why. The white rider goes out to conquer. And then they create wars. And they pit people against each other. Okay? What in the world is going on? People are being pitted against each other. Republicans, conservatives versus the liberal left. Okay? You can peacefully protest in front of Justice Kavanaugh or peacefully protest and burn down a city, 
but if you want to voice your opinion in a in a school board meeting, you are now a terrorist, okay? So, you know, you you begin to see something that's just not right. People are being pitted against each other. So, this correlates with the meaning of the number two, okay? You'll see some things here. I want to go here to the third one. The black horse is related to Gimel. How is it related? How does it correlate with the letter Gimel and what it means? So we're going to go to the letter Gimel. Gimel is the third letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It's a picture of a leg. It expresses movement, travel toward unity or unifying with something. You can be unity with pride, unity with the system. It also means how to move toward uh, divine perfection, how God tries to get us, you know, to get people to come back to him, to unite back with him, be reconciled. It has a lot of different meanings. But it also expresses a, a binding unity with authority of some type, a joining of people into unity defined in um, Genesis chapter 1, verses 9 through 13, you know, becoming one flesh with. The Antichrist system wants you to become one flesh with it. So let's look at the, the third seal. It says, when he opened the third seal, I heard the living creature say, come and see. And I looked and behold, a black horse and one who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard the voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, a quart of wheat for denarius and three quarts of barley for denarius. But do not harm the oil and the wine. How is this bringing people into unity? This connects right to Revelations chapter 13. How so? You can't buy, sell, or eat. This is expressing... You can't buy, sell, or eat unless you comply. And the only way we can get you to comply, like every communist revolution does, is through a famine. The, the rest of the world is in famine, but those at the top enjoy the oil and the wine. Okay? We are seeing conditions ripe for worldwide famine like we have never seen before because of these people. These people are satanic. They are Luciferian in their mindset. I don't know if they're worshiping openly, but when I see Pfizer supporting what they're supporting on the Grammys, it makes you wonder. You start to see the connection. There is a big thing at the top, and it filters down, and they want to control the world and destroy God's order and design. You know that uh, Noah Harari wrote, they, they, they actually call him the prophet of the WEF. Now, I heard people call him the prophet of the WEF. Amazing, isn't it? Hmm. Makes you think. And so he wants to make human beings hackable, to control you. It's all about domination control and deception in order to reach an achievable end where they enjoy the oil and the wine and you all are made to comply. And the best way to comply is to starve you, to create chaos, destroy the world's order. Because there's people who are going to resist that don't want to be hackable. you got to get rid of them. We'll see this later in, in the text. You'll start seeing things connect like you have never seen before. So they want to bring into unity through this black writer. Make you connect to the authoritarian figure, the Antichrist. The Red Rider, same thing. Connect you. He will control the chaos. He will solve the chaos problem. The world leader is going to solve the famine problem. Now you're kind of seeing this a little bit, a little bit differently, aren't you? Let's go to the next one. The Pale Horse, Dalit. Dalit means this, and, how, and so how does Dalit correlate with the fourth letter of the Hebrew alphabet? Dalit, it means a door, entryway, pathway, moving back and forth in and out of a door. Uh, it denotes creative works of God or man, works of the devil. It can express metaphorically the opening and closing a door, so forth, etc. There's a lot of definitions there, but I just kind of compiled them. So basically, which one applies? So you've got to ask, which one applies to here? What type of door is being opened? That's what you look for. What type of path? What are you looking for? How do you know how to define what this word means in the text? So that's what we're going to look at. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and, and the name of him who sat on it was Death and Hades followed him. And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, hunger, and with death, and by beast of the fields. Here, Dalit means opening of a door. Why? Because death and Hades, or hell, followed him. 
he opened the door of hell. And you're going to see in the bowls of wrath the door of hell being unleashed. You'll see it in the seven trumpets being unleashed as well. Especially in the, where in the fourth trumpet and the fourth uh, bowl of wrath. You will see these things actually connect. <laughs> We're going to go over this. You'll, you'll see it. And so death in Hades follow an open door okay so the Antichrist is going to come to power by pitting people against each other by you know critical race theory stuff like that pitting races against each other pit people against each other countries pitted against each other wars and rumors and war happening and then you're going to have uh, we're going to force you to comply and get you in this system is through uh, famine Food shortages looming ahead. You should look at this. Right now, you know, in the United States, you can get food, so forth, etc., in different places. In other places, you're seeing shortages. Okay? What's going on? Well, they want you to comply. I heard the best estimates that we won't really see the stuff really hit the fan until uh, around March or springtime. They're in, in between March and June. That's what they're, they're saying. After that, uh, the animals they had to slaughter won't be slaughtered anymore because there won't be any. Uh, egg producing plants have burned down in Connecticut. We're, we're seeing sabotage. We're seeing things that are, that are unreal. These people are hellish and demonic. If you see what you saw at the Grammy Awards and it's sponsored by Pfizer, what the heck is going on? They are p pushing toward totalitarianism. Total control over people. Every totalitarian uses these implementations in order to do this. They want to starve the people, pit people against each other, and then come to power as the savior. And they'll release hell and death to do it. Okay? They don't care. They're following somebody else. They want to lay the system for the Antichrist to appear so they can hand it over to them. And... Let's look at the fifth seal. The fifth seal. The fifth seal is the martyrs under the altar of God. How does that relate to the number five? Okay, let me look for the number five. Okay, number five is the pictograph of man with his arms upheld. It means behold. That's all it means. Behold. Surprise. There's something coming down the pike. Pay attention. But basically, I wrote down here, it means behold, a revelation of judgment or grace. A revelation of life or death. It's per the context it's found in. It can mean grace or it can mean judgment. It can all that stuff. It means something that startles or frightens somebody or, or a warning to pay strong attention. So how do you know which uh, meaning applies to this in the fifth um, seal? Look at it. It says in verse 9 of Revelation chapter 6 in New King James. And he opened the fifth seal, and I saw under the altar souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony they had been held. They cried out with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge your, our blood on those who dwell the earth? Number five here is related to judgment. How long until you judge these people? It's right there in the text, folks. It correlates to the, the meaning of the fifth letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Never use the Greek alphabet to interpret numbers at all. Verboten, folks. Don't do it. In the New Testament, you have to correlate the numbers with the Hebrew num numbers and meaning. Forget this intellectual, logical thing that people do. You get off into whack land when you do. Okay? So, <laughs> let's go back and look at this again. We're going to look at the sixth seal. And it's about the earthquakes, the sun and the moon and the stars fall. And it's related to the letter of Va. And I want to show you what that means in a minute. Yes. Okay, so in Revelation chapter 6, verse 12, I looked, and when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake. The sun became black as sackcloth as hair, and the moon became like blood. The stars of heaven fell to the earth, and the fig tree drops its late figs when it's shaken by the mighty wind. Okay, how is this related? Okay, let's go back to what the meaning of the number six is. 
Number six is the Hebrew letter Vav. It's originally of a hook or a bob that was used to hang the curtain in the temple. You know, thus to attach or connect. It's also a picture of a hook, a tent peg. It's all, it also, meaning out of the Bible, is a number for man, as well as what one attaches or secures or hooks yourself to. The idea of six is who or what one attach oneself to. Is it man, sin, the devil, idols, antichrist, God? What, what is it? And second meanings mean you can mean uh, wickedness in man and manifestations of sin and Satan that one can attach to others or, they can, or you can attach to other people. Are you going to attach the goodness to aid and help and impart and attach goodness and help people find Christ, so forth, etc. So there's a lot of definitions to the number six. But the basic idea is attaching to, what you attach yourself to. So we're going to go back and look at this verse. And the stars fell. The sky receded up in verse 14. Every mountain and island was moved out of this place. And the kings of the earth, the rich men and great men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave and every free man hid themselves in the caves and the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains, Fall on us, hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of, of the land. So in the text, you have kings of the earth, great men and rich men. So you have actually men, human beings mentioned in this verse. And you'll find this also in the sixth trumpet and the sixth vial of wrath related to human beings of some type, okay? So this is telling me here, this is what people attach themselves to. Guess what? We can control the weather. The earth is ours. We know what's best. We need to reduce carbon emissions. We need to, we need, we need to uh, do this in order to save the planet. This is Gaia worship. This is what a lot of these people are worshiping. We're seeing it, folks. What's the judgment here? You think you control everything? Look, there's going to be a great earthquake. You don't control the earth. The sun is going to be black as sackcloth. The stars in heaven are going to fall to the earth as tree drops from the late figs when shaken by a mighty wind. You know, the whole everything is going to be ripped up. Everything you think you can control. You think this, you own everything? You think you can hack people? Hmm. And they're going to shake in the mighty fear of God. Because whatever they try to, they, they attach themselves that they can control everything in order to bring this, this system up. And God's going to totally tear it asunder. These people are going to be frightened to no end because they don't control anything. You ever seen a narcissist or a psychopath, you probably haven't, uh, lose control? How fearful they get when they're actually challenged? I know what I'm talking about. I worked in community corrections. I, I, I was also a case manager. And part of my job was on a treatment team and uh, to... Uh, manage uh, treatment teams for sex offenders, okay? So I dealt with psychopaths and narcissists, okay? And these individuals, you have to confront them in order to break their domination because they want to dominate and control. And you have to break that. You have to be very confrontational. I don't know if that they will even allow that anymore because they treat these people with kid gloves now. But I'm just saying. I see that. He refers to the kings of the earth and what they think they control is being totally shaken up. They think they control the world. They think themselves as gods. And you see that in the text. You know, the sun and, and the moon darkened. These guys can't do that. But, they, but think. I want you to think real, real, real hard and heavy. It's been out that they are they, not only are they releasing um, silver iodine into the sky to make it rain, so forth, etc., but uh, through Bill Gates, and you can research this, it's been out in the news as a headline, and it's suddenly buried, but they're releasing the sulfur type stuff into the atmosphere to cool the planet down. Something Bill Gates wanted to do. Hmm, think you can control everything, think you're a god is being upended here in that seal when it's unleashed. And then the seventh seal is silence in heaven. Zayan, how does that relate? 
Zayin is the seventh. It is a picture of a plow. It's basic refers to plowing towards perfection. And that's wholeness, soundness. In a negative sense, the enemy getting you into his perfection of envy, malice, every evil work. Uh, it also can be made into a weapon, a sword, to bring about wholeness and soundness through spiritual warfare. So the idea is beating plows into swords and swords into plowshares. And you need plows in order to make war, to grow the food. And, and the idea is, is using it as a weapon in order to produce some type of perfection. And so the seventh uh, seal is what? Silence in heaven for a half hour. Why is that? Because this number seven is related to the seventh trumpet and the seventh vial, which talks about the Lord establishing his kingdom on earth. So this silence is the calm before the storm, so to speak. You're going to see God's perfection prevail, but there's going to be a time of silence. Just think about it. This is because it's plowing. You can't see what's going on. Uh, it, it, this is being dug up. All this stuff is probably people are not even going to notice it because it takes time to grow. You adapt to the change. You don't think anything's going on. Adapt to the change. It goes on and on and on. And, and so you have that perfection. Well, let's move on real quickly to the seven trumpets and, and see what we see. I kind of wrote this out a little bit better. The first trumpet is, is about devastation. And it says here, the first angel sounded his trumpet, and there came hail, fire mixed with blood, and it was hurled down to the earth, and a third of the earth was burned up, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. So this is Aleph. Aleph means what gives strength. So the definition of how to, to apply here in Aleph here is what gives your persons their power, their strength, and their authority. Okay? So... When this happens, this trumpet, a third of the earth is burned up, a third of the trees are burned up, and a third of the green grass is burned up. What gives you strength, gives you your authority, is burned up. This is what it's talking about. This is what the world's leaders, they want to control the earth. They think they do. And what they're doing is going to probably produce this stuff, okay? And God's going to produce a judgment from the first trumpet to destroy what gives strength. That's exactly what this is saying, okay? I hope you can see when you, you apply the definition to where it's used at and you begin to see something. You will see, like I said, the, the, the people of the elites of the world think that they can control the planet. They can control the climate. They can control the food supply. They can control the oceans. They can control the sea, the seas. They can control what you eat. They can control everything. They want to control you through this use of control. This is what's being upset. This is the Antichrist system that they're set in place for the Antichrist to arise to solve the problems that they created. Now it's getting out of hand. And so judgment comes. What you try to find strength in, Trees produce oxygen. They get rid of CO2. Green grass means all plants, like plants, wheat, crops, food, stuffs. You need grass for animals to eat. They want to control animals. They want to control how much methane gas we release from a cow, a, a chicken, or whatever. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. Look it up. And they, they want to control everything. Okay? But they can't control what, what happens out of, that falls from the sky. They can't help anything. They can't help judgment coming. They can't stop it because they ain't gods. Okay? We want to find out who, in a minute, who's this being addressed to. So we go to the second trumpet. Targets the seas. Bet is the house. It means the house of the seas and what it provides is going to be divided away from humanity. It says the second angel sounded his trumpet. It was like a huge mountain all ablaze was thrown into the sea. A third of the sea was turned into blood. A third of the living creatures of the sea died. And a third of the ships were destroyed. A third of the sea turned into blood. A third of, of living creatures of the sea died. This is what brings you provision. Look at this. A third of the sea turned into blood. Three, what brings and unites and... and to the Antichrist right there. You add another third, that's six. What man attaches to the living creatures of the sea to take from them to eat fish and seafood, okay? 
has died. And a third of the ships, you add that to number nine being an open vessel where you contain things like a gift. The ships bearing commerce are going to be destroyed. You think you world's elites control everything? You think you own the world? You think that you're gods? All that's removed. Let's look at the fourth trumpet. The fourth trumpet if trumpet affects the sun, the moon, and the stars. When the fourth angel sounded, a third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon was struck, a third of the stars, so that the third of them were darkened, and a third of the day did not shine, and likewise the night. So I looked and heard the, uh, saying, an angel saying, Woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, because the remaining blast of the trumpet of the three angels is are about to sound. Let's go back to the word Dalit. Dalit means uh, entryway, a pathway. It's also a way to tell time, so forth, etc., it's creative works of, of God or man. So just talking about creative works. That definition is found in Genesis chapter 1 where it talks about on the fourth day of creation the sun, moon, and stars were created. And then here on this it's talking about here on the fourth trumpet it affects the sun, moon, and the stars. The creative works that open the doors to change signs, seasons, and laws. This is what is being expressed here. This is a judgment against those who think they can change time, seasons, and law. Book of Daniel. This connects to the book of Daniel about the Antichrist changing signs, seasons, and laws, times, and so forth. Times, the creative works of God. Change them. Build them back better. Think about it. Think what's, what's, what doors being opened up here. So the fourth angel sound, and a third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon was struck, and a third of the stars. Then so that a third of them turned dark, and a third was a day without night, and so the third of the night. This is talking about the creative works of opening the doors to change times, seasons, and laws are being judged against these people. Let's look at the fifth trumpet. It's He, Va. Remember He? He means behold something, some type of revelation of grace or, or judgment or life or something is coming. A warning, pay strong attention. So we go back to the fifth trumpet. This, this trumpet releases Satan's demonic influence. They're mentioned as locusts, tormenting those who reject God. And only those who are protected have the seal of God on their head. So you see in this Revelation chapter 9 verses 1 through 12, Satan's demonic influence being released. This is judgment of the demonic being released upon the planet. Hey, Ava, pay attention. This is the judgment of the demonic. You people worship the Luciferian agenda. You worship this stuff. You're going to get it. You're going to see the truth of what these entities are all about. Boom, bada boom, bada bang. Here you go. Here, Apollon, the destroyer, Apollo, destroyer, Nurgle, the uh, the plague god of, uh, who deceives you with art and entertainment and all this nice stuff and makes it sound great to destroy you. It's coming and all his minions are going to be released upon the earth. This is what it's saying. Hey, Va, pay attention. The, the judgment of the demonic is coming against you people who think you can control everything. And you're in charge. And you can have this uh, a Grammy Award cere satanic ceremony on primetime TV for the kiddies to watch. Because that way is freedom. And God's way is restrictive and narrow-minded and bigoted and intolerant. But aren't you being bigoted, intolerant with f silencing free speech, open debate, silencing actual science and peer reviews about certain topics? Aren't you want to control everything and dominate everything, ha make you hackable and controllable? All, and you worship this stuff, it's going to come at you. What you sow is what you reap. That's what's happening. The sixth trumpet, Revelations 9, verses 13 through 21, it says, The rest of the mankind who were not killed by these plagues still do not repent of the works of their hands. They do not stop worshiping demons and idols of gold and silver, bronze and wood and idols that cannot see or hear or walk, nor do they repent of their murders or magic arts or sexual immorality or their thefts. Notice the word mankind is mentioned. Notice that the number six is related to human, human beings. Number six is the idea of the number of man, what you attach to. The idea is you attach to sin, man, devil, idols, or whatever. The sixth trumpet. The rest of mankind were not killed by these plagues, did, did not repent of their works of their hands. Mankind, humankind, is mentioned 
Okay, what are they attached to? Works of their hands, worshiping demons, idols of gold, silver, bronze, stone, and wood, idols that cannot see or hear or walk, nor do they repent of their murders, their magic arcs, sexual immorality, or their thefts. Have you heard of redistribution of wealth and equity? We gotta make you suffer, cause you, you, you did too much consuming. We gotta give it to us. I mean, to give to them, to redistribute to everybody else, so everybody can be equally poor, dumbed down, and we can control the world's population, cause we worship these things that you see on the Grammy Awards. A satanic ritual. You think I'm kidding you? <laughs> That's how this number helps you, and it connects, and you begin to see. This is talking about attachment. When I start thinking about attachment here, what, what are these people attached to? And you see it in the definition. That's basically how you get the definition of the number six anyway. You look where it's ever it's written, and there it is. The seventh trumpet, Zeon. It's a picture of a plow. Its basic meaning refers to plowing or warring toward perfection, wholeness, and soundness. And the seventh angel sounded his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven, saying, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord uh, and of his Messiah, and, and he will reign forever and ever. Isn't that perfection? <laughs> or isn't it? God's going to restore order. He's going to restore things. He's going to get rid of the wicked and the evil. In his way, not ours. So I'm going to go to Revelation chapter 16, folks, on my Bible. I somehow lost my place. Yeah, well, my marker's right in the Bible, but it wasn't up, so I couldn't see it. So number 16, verse 2. And so the first messenger poured out his bowl on the earth. A foul, loathsome sore came upon men who had the mark of the beast and who worshipped his image. So we have that. So, how does that relate to the word Aleph? Aleph means, um, go back to Aleph, what it means. Aleph means any strong leader, and also means strength, power, and authority. So, you see this in the definition here, in, found in Revelations, concerning chapter 16, concerning the, seven, the first bowl of God's wrath. And he poured out his first bowl, and loathsome, loathsome sores came upon men who had the mark of the beast who worshipped his image. Several things. The sores, uh, people's strength is in their youth, and their vitality, and their beauty, because that's what the system worships us. Youth and beauty. These people think they can make a transhuman so you can live forever, and you can defeat death. Okay, that's what they're trying to do. And so... That strength of beauty is going to be marred through, through the swords. And then who you attach to and worship okay, is the strong one, the Antichrist, the beast in his, in his image. Okay? Do you see how the number Aleph, the meaning of it, connects and correlates to this? Then the second angel poured out his bowl on the sea and it became as blood as of a dead man and every living creature died. Again, Really interestingly, number two is connected to the sea. Number three is connected to, to waters. You'll, you'll see that in the third in the third angel poured on rivers and potable water. So, you know, you'll see how in this is all connects. The second trumpet matches the second bowl of wrath. The third trumpet matches the third bowl of God's wrath. Okay? So the second bowl, bet is the entire house of the sea. Remember, bet means house, and the entire uh, house of the sea is gone, divided away from man's use because they think they can control the sea and what's in it. Go to Norway, you have these fish farms. I don't have nothing against fish farms. They're great. But the idea is that they can control everything, and probably they're probably even thinking, I don't know if they have, but most likely if they're thinking of synthetic meat, I think they're trying to make synthetic fish meat too. Because fishing can put too much carbon dioxide into the air, and carbon dioxide is bad. But for the poor trees, the trees need carbon dioxide to produce oxygen. So this, this idea of carbon neutral will hurt the trees. You'll, you'll see all these judgments interlocked with each other here. But anyway, so the house of the sea is divided away. As the sea is turned into blood like a dead person, every living thing in the sea died. A third of the sea life had already perished 
before, but this this is this is a heavy duty. So two thirds are going to uh, at this is gone, and this one tops the cake. This will be three thirds is gone. What you think you can control the sea, control the oceans, is gone. So the house of the sea is totally destroyed and divided away from man. So it's bet means a household and division. The third bowl, Gimel, is an interesting one. It's the third bowl of wrath here. So the third angel, and this is uh, Revelation 16, verse 4, and the third angel poured out his bowl on the rivers and springs of water, and they became blood. And it explains why in verses 5 and 6. And I heard the angel of the water saying, O oh, you are righteous, O Lord, the one who is who was and is to be, because you have judged these things. For they have shed blood of the saints and prophets, and you have given them blood to drink, for it is their just due. It explains itself there. So, what is going on? So, in order to unite people to the Antichrist, they slew many people who opposed them, who would not take the mark, who would not comply, who would not agree with being a hackable animal who do not agree with their agenda had to be silenced and censored and they want to make war against God's saints in order to unify everybody to the Antichrist because three involves moving towards some type of unity okay let's go back and look at that toward unity toward some type of divine perfection and it could be the devil's perfection here this is exactly what they were doing they want people to be moved and guided toward perfection they want to actually lie to you to deceive you in order to create the greatest good because they that's what they think they want to divide you know to move everybody into this unity so we go back here and we see in here that their unity it was uh, poured out in the water of the springs there's a lot here first this is this is talking about living water okay now Christ has living water we also have potable water that we drink that we get our water from rivers streams so forth that we we need water to survive okay we need living water from god to survive what these people are giving is polluted water from the devil's hellhole in order to survive and to be united with that and that water makes you is, is the drinking of blood and the shedding of blood through murder theft robbery kill rob and destroy mentality to achieve the greatest good according to them so if anybody who opposes them to the martyrs under the altar, whatever, they, 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 they gotta, you, you got to go. You are a hindrance to them. If you don't want this, you will starve to death. If you don't want the way, way we're going, this perfect new world, or we're absolute, total, top-down, bottom-up control, where we control every aspect of your life, because we know how to live your life better than we do. We can control, we can control everything. We control the earth, the world, to control and make a carbon-neutral stuff. We are going to lay down laws that you can't cross, that if you have free speech, that's taken away. You, that's misinformation. we got to silence you to protect other people. And we're top-down control authoritarians and uh, we're going to make you comply if you don't you die and in the book and the book of Revelation during the tribulation period they're killing these they make war against the Saints so now their living water that they thought was living water is going to be turned to blood and they're and you get the picture for killing off of those that oppose them and God's people that oppose them interesting how it relates to about being brought into unity with something and it answers it in those verses I just I shared just a second ago about Lord your judgments are just Holy One you or you have these people have shed the blood now they're going to be made to drink blood in order you know because they wouldn't come in unity the fourth bowl is Dalit again creative works are judged okay let's look at the fourth one here it's Revelation 16. And the fourth angel poured his bowl in the sun, the, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat, that they blasphemed the name of God, who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent nor give him glory. So the fourth angel is pouring out on the creative works of the sun. This is the sun, moon, and the stars, creative works. This is the definition here is... Not so much about opening and closing of doors here or, or being on a journey or so, anything like that. Its definition is more defined as creative works. So it's the creative works of the sun. 
Remember how just a few minutes ago we talked about how these people worshipped idols, worshipped the devil, they worshipped the Antichrist, the sun deity. And you kind of get the idea? They have attached themselves to the strong one by worshipping the sun deity. Now they're in their house, they're united with him and in his creative works. So now uh, judgment is coming. And how is God going to judge that? He's going to make the real sun in the sky to burn you up. <laughs> These people who worship this stuff, they're going to be scorched and burned. That's an amazing thing, isn't it? See how it kind of relates to... If you think I'm off base, that's fine. You can put it in the comments. But you got to explain to me why do they have a satanic ritual on display in the Grammys put on by Pfizer and you're seeing it all over the place now. And if you don't comply, you're silenced. You're seeing the stages being set for the stuff to happen right now as we live. And this is why, because people think that they can control everything, even the sun. And like I said before, they're spraying the sulfur stuff, the same stuff that the volcanoes naturally put out and the earth will cool down. So they're putting it out there right now. It's been in the news. Look it up. They're, they're going to cool the earth down. Think you can control the sun? Well, have a nice sunburn. Yeah, who controls the actual sun? You think you control everything, mankind, with worshipping the beast system? Now let's go to the, the fifth letter is the pentagraph of man. That means, hey... Uh, behold, revelation of coming of judgment or grace, so forth, or etc. So, how does that relate to the fifth angel? So, I'm going to go over to the fifth angel, poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and his kingdom became full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues because of pain. And they blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and not repent of their deeds. There's judgment against the beast going on in that verse. Judgment against the beast and the beast system and those who worship and judgment's coming this is a revelation of judgment behold pay attention judgment's coming this judgment is against the kingdom of the beast and those that follow him and the reality of his darkness is really made manifest here how dark it is total blackness what this person entities and these demonic beings want to produce on earth is darkness and they call it darkness light they call darkness knowledge. They call darkness these things. Now God's saying in the fifth bowl, I'm issuing judgment against this Hummer. He's going to be the judgment against darkness. There's a sixth angel poured his, out his bowl in the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up, and the, and the way of the kings from the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of demons performing signs which go out to the whole kings of the earth and to the whole world to gather to them together for the great battle of the you know the battle of Armageddon. Okay? Just gonna paraphrase that. So how does the sixth bowl of wrath relate to the meaning of the number six, which is the Hebrew letter Va here? Well six is what a man attaches to himself. It's your works you and you impart to and attach to other people, so forth, etc. That's the idea. It's a it's a number of man, so forth, etc. So we're going to look at the number six here in the sixth judgment. Okay, so what you have here are kings of the earth, leaders in the earth, the world of the leaders, the great men of the earth, the kings, the leaders, again, man, who attach themselves to the Antichrist, are going to be drawn into a final battle in the battle of Armageddon when Jesus comes back in Revelation 19 and slays them hummers with the sword of his mouth. We're going to be behind them riding white horses. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And when you think of that, when you read this, let me read it again. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, out of the mouth of the false prophet. Three. Three means to bring into unity. These spirits are bringing the kings of the... Number six is related to man to bring the leadership of the world and the world's elite and to unite them to the Antichrist. Because the number three is about bringing into unity, traveling toward unity. You have the kings of the east being traveling. You're seeing that there too. 
You see all this stuff being prepared. For there are spirits of demons performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and to the whole world to gather them to battle against the great day of the Almighty. Revelation 19 is coming, folks. And it says in verse 15, Behold, I'm coming as a thief. Blessed he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and he see his shame. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus is coming back and going to slay these Hummer because they are gathered in a place called Armageddon. Right, it connects to the book of Daniel. These are about what human beings are attaching themselves to and these spirits attaching the darkness to these leaders to gather them together into Armageddon. That's how the number six correlates to that. And what of the number, the seventh bowl? <laughs> the seventh bowl of wrath. That's Revelation 16, verse 7. And the seventh angel poured out his bowl in the air and a loud voice came out of the temple of heaven saying, and from the throne, it is done. There were noises, thunderings, lightnings. There was a great earthquake, such as a mighty great earthquake, which had not occurred since the men were on earth. Now the great city, which was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and the great Babylon was remembered before God, and to give her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Then every the island fled away, and great hail from he heaven fell upon men, every hailstone about the weight of a talent. And men blasphemed God because the plague of hail, since the plague was extremely great. So, what's going on here? Number seven refers to uh, bringing about perfection and going to war. Now we see the number seven aspect. Number seven, the sword aspect of number seven coming into play here. To extract wrathful vengeance upon these entities and these people united with these entities. And one last thing. And also, when it says it is finished, this is finished. The plow is done. It's turned into a sword. And uh, as you read and you get to Revelation chapter 21, God's final perfection arises at an appointed time in history of a new heavens and earth where righteousness and truth and no more sin, no more sickness, no more death reigns. Where righteousness and truth reigns and the other stuff doesn't. That's what I should have said. You don't want to be confused there. But that's what I'm talking about. So this is how these things relate to each other. So you have the silence in heaven. Then you have the seventh trumpet talking about God's perfection being about. And then you have the second definition of number seven being applied in the seventh bowl of brass being turned into a sword seen in great hailstones. Taking the final plot of wrath being plopped down on these kings and leaders of the earth. What's interesting, it talks about in Revelation 16 here. Let me turn back to it. I closed my Bible too prematurely, folks, so just bear with me and get to Revelation chapter 16. It says something very interesting. Now the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And the great Babylon was remembered before God to give her the cup of the fierceness of great wrath. So this time about Babylon, according to the context, the best I can ascertain is this. Now the great city Babylon was divided into three parts. Some people say Jerusalem, but whatever. A city is going to be divided in three parts. Why? Because uh, they're going to, they united everybody to Babylon to the Babylonian system, the Antichrist system. And they're going to be judged. The sword's coming against them finally. It is done. It's over. Everyone's crying out, God, why don't you stop evil? Why don't you do this? Well, now it's done. He's telling you the truth. It's done. <laughs> it's the way I'm going to do it. It's going to be done. In the meantime, well, why is God delaying so much? I remember this is called why. This, this program is called why. Why did God take so long? I go back to Second Chronicles, Second Kings, and I go back even to the Book of Judges, all the way to up to second end of Second Chronicles. God always offers, always offers repentance. He offered repentance, a chance for Ahab, as wicked and vile as Ahab was, a chance to repent. Right? It's in Second Kings and Second Chronicles there. And he repented. And he restrained his, his, his wrath against him. 
And then there was a point of no remedy was reached in Ahab's life. And it was a cutoff time. And Ahab was just playing God. I repent and remorseful with regret because I'm, you know, and all of a sudden he didn't really repent. He was just as wicked and vile as he was before. He changed his ways right back. And, this, and God says, enough is enough. It says in the Bible, God is slow to anger and slow to, slow to wrath, not willing that any should perish, but all come through the knowledge of eternal life. So that's why he's slow to anger, to bring as many people into the kingdom of God. That's why he's always offering repentance to the people in the book of Revelation who will not repent. Now, I do believe there will be people who will repent, and they will have to give up their life because of the cause of Christ, because these people are out to get rid of them, as the book of Revelation talks about, to make war against the saints. So you, you see all this dynamic at work and at play. And so I just hope you understand why God takes so long to get something done. It's because he doesn't want people to perish. He's offering all a chance to repent. And I'm going to turn to the book of Second Chronicles. I wasn't ready to, but I'm going to do it anyway. Second Chronicles here, uh, chapter 36, verse 15 and 16 answers why. And the Lord God of their father sent warnings to them by his messengers, rising up early and sending them, because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. Think about it. The whole earth is filled with the Lord's glory. The earth belongs to the Lord. Okay? But they mocked his, the messengers of God, despised his words, and scoffed at his prophets, until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people, till there was no remedy. There comes a cutoff point, folks. You don't understand this principle. You won't make sense of Revelation chapter 2 and 3, of judgment beginning in the house of God first during in the last day's church. There's no remedy. If the church gets it together and um, in the five that have fallen get it together and, and repent in mass, not just a few people, then God will turn everything around and things will go back. But if not, there's no remedy other than the releasing of God's total wrath. That's the principle. And so, there's a weapon of spiritual warfare that people often miss. It's a very powerful weapon. Now, I will share on that next week, because I don't have time now. And that weapon is very powerful, and yet no one, very few people, I don't know if I've heard anyone ever teach on this weapon, yet people talk about it all the time and mention it, but they never view it as a spiritual weapon. And I'll show you what it is and everything, what this weapon is. And uh, the weapons over warfare are not carnal, but mighty and pull pulling down in strongholds. We're going to look at this mighty weapon. And if you'd like to contact me, my contact information is on the screen. And everything you need to know, my book's up there, A Land Unknown, Hell's Dominion, how to connect with me, everything. And I just want to make just one uh, last comment here, folks. I am actually swamped. I have tons of emails and people wanting me to call them back and I just simply can't do it. And the volume of calls I get and, and everything that I'm getting right now, I, I'm, all, I'm so overwhelmed and almost sometimes I'm stunned at people's comments and their needs and sometimes I just f f uh, fall on the floor and I just want to weep and, and I just can't reach all, reach all of you. I can't pray for all of you. I can't comment to everybody. And, and, and my deepest heartfelt apologies is not humanly possible for me to do. So I'm not ignoring you. I just haven't got to you yet. So if you wrote me an email or wanted to contact me, just just know that. It's just I'm just overwhelmed. So and pray for me. And pray for everybody in the ministry who are doing the work. Pray for your pastors. Pray for your leadership. Uh, amen. However God leads you. With that, you guys be blessed in Jesus' name.